And welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and we're going to ban 10 cards in Commander. Or are we? I thought I would make a, a sort of an interesting video about cards to ban in the format, and these are always the most contentious issues when you talk about this. I guess in any format, the, the cards that are banned and unbanned are really contentious issues. Any video I've done talking about banning or unbanning cards has gotten tons of comments. I think my the biggest dislike ratio I have for my videos are always on videos like that. You know, everyone's entitled to their opinions, of course. And Commander, though, is a particular format in, in this regard, obviously, because the cards that are banned aren't decided by Wizards of the Coast, for those who don't know. It's decided by the Rules Committee, which is essentially, to make a long story short, the people that created the format. So what I decided to do, I thought an interesting way to go about this would be I asked my patrons on my Discord. I said, if you guys would ban a card, you know, any cards you guys want banned, you know, what would they be? And I took their suggestions and I thought I would make a video of 10 cards that I've heard suggestions of other people, my patrons wanting to ban and a lot of other people calling for these cards to be banned as well. And I would give my opinion on it. And of course, my opinion has changed a lot. If you watch my banned and commander video, which I did a long time, over a year ago now. <clears throat> One of my favorite videos to watch, though, I really actually like that video. I went over all of the banned cards in the format and my opinion on them and whether or not they should or should not be banned. And I really did err on the side of unbanning cards and cards not being banned. And I have even more moved in that direction. I, I think when I first started playing Commander, I was definitely on the the you know, the side of, of banning cards that were just unfun. And I've really moved in the other direction a lot, you know, like Armageddon, for example, which is a card that I'm not going to talk about necessarily, but I guess I am going to talk about. It's not on the top 10 list, but it is a card that needs to be talked about. I mean, if you ban Armageddon, what about all the other mass land destruction cards? Okay, so now I ban all the other mass land destruction cards, you know, and like at what point do you stop, right? Now am I going to ban Winter Orb as well? Because Winter Orb hates on lands and not land destruction, but it is making those lands not on tap, right? And and especially if you get to the point where, you know, if I'm going to ban land destruction, it's really going to make those lands decks even better. And where do you draw the line? A card like Keldon Fire Bombers, which is actually, I think, a pretty good card. And it's funny. I'm going to make another video about sort of nasty cards that people don't like that I actually kind of do like. And this is one of them that I actually think is pretty good. Um, that's a card that, you know, do you ban that as well? Like, where do you stop once you go down the the land destruction uh, banning path, you know, I think it's a dangerous road to go down. And that's why I tend to err on the side of not banning cards. I will get more into my philosophy of that as we get to the cards, though, and I'll sort of get into my philosophy about why ban or unban cards. So I'm going to start at number 10 with Aetherflux Reservoir, which is a card that, you know, a while ago, and I talked about this in my ban and commander video about how I would want that card banned. And I don't want it banned because it's necessarily busted. I just think it's unfun. I have changed my opinion, though. I mean, it is a win con for a lot of decks that maybe don't have one. Like a life gain deck, it is a good win con. I, the only thing that I think is is just super unfun about it is the, the, the I can just make an opponent lose the game with this. I guess there's already cards that lose the game. You know, door to nothing, this is a card that just makes target player lose a game. And that is actually kind of a fun, you know, for me, I would have no problem losing to a door to nothingness. The only problem um, when you get into the target player, uh, you know, sort of loses the game scenario is it can just be a really feel bad situation for that player that is losing the game, right? You know, it's like, oh, I don't get to play anymore. Like you, you're not allowed to play. Though the rest of us, the other three are going to keep on playing. You just have to sit out. You know, but I guess that always happens in games a lot anyway. So that's why I've sort of, eased up on this card. I don't think it should be banned. Blightsteel Colossus is another one that could fit in this category where it's typically going to be a one shot. And, you know, I don't love that. And this gets into the infect argument a little bit. I, I would totally be okay with them increasing infect damage to 20. But that's another argument for another video. Um, you know, the fact that it is still at 10 makes it so that a Blightsteel Colossus can easily one shot you. And again, it can be a, a win con in a deck that maybe doesn't have a lot of great win cons, which is kind of okay. And it, But again, you get into the situation where your opponent has the Blightsteel Colossus and you have three opponents sitting around going, which one of us is, is it going to be? And, you know, you can get some real feel-bad moments there where you have 
someone who like, oh, well, you you killed my commander earlier in the game. So I'm going to kill you now. <laughs> Payback. Right. It's kind of hard to avoid those situations. I don't love it. Um, I, again, I talked about this in another really old video of mine about the uh, five worst commander plays. And that that was one of them. It was, you know, basically poor decision making or uh, threat assessment, poor threat assessment, where instead of attacking the person that I should be attacking with the Blight Steel Colossus, which is probably the most threatening person or the person that I'm going to have the hardest time killing, I'm going to attack the person that I just don't like. And unfortunately, that's something that just happened, you know, or I'm, I'm going to get payback because you did something to me earlier in the game. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, that's just a situation that is unavoidable. You know, um, you just can't get away from that in Commander. It sucks, but, you know, we're all human beings. We make these emotional decisions sometimes. And that's part of the reason why I think people don't like cards like Blightsteel Colossus or Aetherflux Reservoir. And definitely a reason why I didn't like them. But do I think they should be banned? No. Next up, we have Fierce Guardianship. And again, you could probably also throw Deflecting Swat in here. Probably the card over the last couple of years that I that I have heard the most complaints about is Fierce Guardianship, the free counterspell thing. And I talked about this when first, Fierce Guardian first came out. Obviously, I didn't have a channel. If I would have, I would have talked about Fierce Guardianship a lot because I thought it was straight up better than uh, Force of Will. I thought it was the best counterspell in the format. When it came out and I was going to make a best counter spells video, you know, back in the early days of my channel and I decided against it doing, doing the I used to have a removal series where I ranked removal and I'm like, first of all, I don't think this th that those videos necessarily served a lot of purpose for people with when it comes to deck building because you know, everyone's got their own opinions and depending on what you're doing and depending on your play group, there's a lot of, of variations there involved, but also it changes so quickly. And when I started doing my removal series, um, Strixhaven came out right after that and had a ton of fantastic removal. And I'm like, well, all those lists I made are now obsolete. That's why I stopped doing it. So I didn't do the counterspell video, but Fierce Guardianship would have been number one for me. I think it's even better than Force of Will as far as a free counterspell goes because you you don't lose the card advantage there. That's why I actually don't love Force of Will. Obviously, it's fantastic, but you lose card advantage because you have to exile a card from my hand, your hand. Fierce Guardianship is just a free counterspell. And as I say all the time, the non-creature spells are usually the ones you want to counter it's really powerful no question and i also got to be honest that i think a lot of people who are calling it for it to be banned are just people that don't like counter spells in general i think that plays a little bit into it and there's there's a lot to talk about, about with counter spells uh, i've talked about a lot on my channel i think that counter spells are overused in a lot of cases and incorrectly used in a lot of cases um for me i used to play first fierce guardianship i don't anymore because again it's become one of those hated cards that just you know, it's not worth it for me. I like that it can you can use it to protect your commander. That when I first saw Fierce Guardianship, okay, I'm like, okay, well, you cast it for free if your commander's out. So there's a great spell. Same with Deflecting Swat that you can use to protect your commander, so that you can cast your commander and then you ha you're tapped out, but you have a free counter spell that you can protect against removal, so that on your turn now you can actually use your commander. That's what I liked about it, and that's why I don't want it to get banned. Um, I understand why people don't like it. A lot of people just don't like counterspells, period. So the idea of a free counterspell really drives those people crazy. I don't think it needs to get banned, though. I actually kind of like that it exists in the format. Sort of like with um, in Legacy, how Force of Will is just absolutely necessary in that format. Having free counterspells as an option where maybe my opponent has it, it makes you think. And it makes it so that you don't just you know run out your combo or whatever because maybe there is that possibility. I like the possibility of my opponent possibly having a free counter spell because then it makes people sort of be a little more strategic with what they're doing next up we got turgrid and again you could throw a few commanders in here that are maybe bannable uh, najila is another one that that was mentioned um for me najila i've been saying it a lot najila and urza are the two commanders that for me are cedh only i don't want to ever see those in a casual game and again we get into the casual versus competitive discussion and that, to me, it plays a lot into these ban lists where you're just not going to play some of these cards in a casual game anyway. So I don't find it to be an issue. For me, I don't find it to be an issue. Uh, banning commanders, I don't think... I can't think of any commanders that I would want banned. In fact, the ones that are already banned, I would probably unban. In a commander game, you know what your opponent has in the command zone. You can see it. 
there it is. So if your opponent's playing one of those commanders, then right away there it's a 3v1. Now I know people will say, well, hey, you don't want people playing Najila or Urza in a, in a casual game. I mean, yeah, I don't. I don't think they should be banned. I also just, why are you playing it in a casual game? That's not really a casual game if you're not playing a casual commander, I don't think. Um, and for me, I don't think there is, you. it's almost impossible to build a casual deck with Urza or Najila. Turgrid, that might be the case as well. Again, I have not, and maybe my opinion is is meaningless here because I haven't played against a Turgrid deck, not once. That commander's been out for a year, over a year. It's it's a popular commander. I have yet to see it. I've heard lots of people complain about it, that they see it all the time. So I don't know what to say. I mean, yes, I can see that it would be annoying, but at the same time, it's a five mana commander. You know it's in the command zone. Save your removal, right? You have a swords in your hand. Just leave it there. And as soon as they cast their commander, you kill it. Or... They cast their commander, and then you wait until they cast that smallpox or whatever. Then you kill it in response, and it does nothing, right? So I don't know. I don't see that as being a huge issue. I'm wearing the shirt here. Removal wins games, guys. If your opponents are playing Turgid, if you're at your LGS and everyone likes to play Turgid decks, just have that removal spell ready to go and problem solved. They're not going to have a lot of fun. Oh, well, guess you shouldn't have brought your Turgid deck, right? You could say the same about Xander, right? The new commander that a lot of people were complaining about and this card should be get banned as soon as they see it. You just got your removal spell ready. Removal ready to go. I mean, you still get the ETB discard trigger, but... The, the really bad one, the dies trigger, I mean, I guess you would have to have, that's hard to get around as well, but I guess that's why that commander is particularly bad. It's not game ending though. It sucks, but it's not game ending. Um, I guess the exile is going to be extra helpful there. Counterspell would be helpful there as well. They won't get nothing. Again, this is why we need the, the counterspells in the format, right? For everyone who doesn't like counterspells. When someone casts an expropriate and someone counters it, or someone casts their Xander and one of your opponents counter it, you're going to be like, whew, good thing he had a counterspell, right? So, right, that's why we need those things. And that's why removal is so important in the format as well. If, you're, if your opponent has a really annoying commander, or even a core vault, like there's lots of commanders like this that, you know, they're just really powerful. And you just, if you see they're playing it, keep your removal ready to go, right? Next up, we got Cyclonic Rift, and this is another card that I've talked about a lot on my channel. I used to love this card, and I put it in all my decks because I liked that it could deal with any situation. And for me, again, it was an answer. It wasn't a win con. When I started he my channel, I started hearing people talk about how Cyclonic Rift, they hate it because, you know, it's just my opponent casts it, and then they untap on their turn and win. I'm just like, what's that scenario? Like, and I still have not heard an answer. I've asked that question so many times, and I still, I had a guy comment once that every single time that a Cyclonic Rift was cast, their opponent won the game. And I'm like, what's hap What's the scenario? Are they comboing off? Because if they're comboing off, they don't need to cast a Cyclonic Rift. You just combo off and win. If it's, I cast a Crater Hoof and swing, again, a Cyclonic Rift is not needed in that scenario. So what is this scenario specifically where I Cyclonic Rift and then I win on my turn? I don't think... And yes, you're putting your opponents back a lot, so maybe you're going to win eventually. The same can be said, again, for like an Expropriate, where Expropriate doesn't actually win you the game, but it puts you so far ahead that you usually typically do. That can be the case... But again, you're in a 3v1 situation, and this is why I took it out of my decks. I took it out of my decks because every time I cast it, the game becomes a 3v1, even though I'm usually using my Cyclonic Rift for, again, that Crater Hoof attack, it saves against that. It saves against my opponent that's going off. It saves against my opponents just have huge boards, and I tend to play slower decks. I don't play lots of fast man and stuff like that, so it's just a way to reset the board so that everything can go back to parity, right? I mean, not totally parody because I still have stuff in play but again I don't play like that so it actually did fit with the way I played and again I I have never seen someone cast a cyclonic rift and then win the game right away maybe they win the game seven turns from now but are you gonna say it was because of the cyclonic rift or was it because of a lot of the other things that was going on right you can't necessarily say it was because of the cyclonic rift and again any board wipe can be the same way in my experience a cyclonic rift is i cast it it resets the board and then everyone just ends up you know unloading their hands again on their turn so it just kind of buys you a turn usually because it's going to be cast later in the game anyway you're not casting it on turn two you're casting it on like turn seven or eight or something right so for me i haven't had a lot of issues with it i absolutely would not call to get for it to get banned i think it's funny how people are just so 
enraged when it comes to Cyclonic Rift. It is the card that really gets people fired up more than anything. From the, the beginning of me playing this format, that was the card. And again, that's why I took it out of my decks, because I don't want to invoke that feeling in people. And the payoff for me isn't worth the the outrage I'm going to get for casting it, right? So no, absolutely not. I, I don't think it should be banned at all. In fact, and I don't think it's as good as people think it is. I, I don't think it's a game-winning card. I would much re- rather see Expropriate get banned than a Cyclonic Rift. Next up, we have Dranith Magic. Magistrate, and this is an interesting one, and obviously the argument here is entirely for this card doesn't allow you to cast your commander, and I get it. I totally get it. Again, though, there is a lot of other options there. Null Chamber, I mentioned in my 10 cards video, you can just name someone's commander, Meddling Mage. There's, there's already lots of cards that that you can keep someone from casting their commander. I guess Dranith Magistrate will hit all of your opponent's but again, whenever you have a card like that, like Grasp of Fate is a perfect example. That's a card that when I first started playing, I was like, that's a great card. You hit something from each of your opponents, that's going in all my white decks, I stopped playing it. The reason why is because it hits all your opponents. If you have a card, and that can probably apply to a lot of the cards on this list, if you have a card that hits all of your opponents, they're all going to be invested in getting it off the table. I don't like Grasp of Fate. I never play it. I would recommend people to not play it unless there's a specific reason to, because you now have three opponents that you have exiled something of theirs that they want back, likely, and they're going to all be invested in getting your Grasp of Fate off the table, which is going to happen really, really quickly. Every time I played Grasp of Fate, it was typically off the table, but by the time I got around to my next turn, because I had three people trying to get rid of it, right? So that actually can be a downside. As much as it's like, wow, that's fantastic value, sometimes it can be a bad thing, because you're having, again, you're sort of turning into that arch enemy scenario, Dranith Magistrate's the same way. If you have three opponents that can't cast their commander because of your creature, not only are you now the arch enemy, but you're also going to have three people trying to get that creature off the table. So, you know, I I think that it is, it's a good card. Sometimes it can be more harm than good to you. And I absolutely, I mean, I get the argument for getting banned because it doesn't allow you to cast your commander and that sort of goes against the game. And yeah, okay. But again, we get into that slippery slope scenario, just like with the mass land destruction, where you, now what? Now now do we ban, ban Null Chamber, Meddling Major, or whatever, any other card that, you know, will, will do that because there are other options. You know, I said the same thing. And again, I'm going on a bit of a tangent. I said the same thing about Hull Breacher. When that got banned, I was like, wait a minute, Notion Thief has been in the format forever. I, and I un, honestly, I never understood the arguments. Why nobody said anything about Notion Thief and Alms Collector would be another lesser version, but still another version. No one ever said anything about Notion Thief, but Hull Breacher, everyone complained about nonstop. And by the way, that's a card that I could care less of whether they banned it or not. They could have left it around. I wouldn't, wouldn't have bothered me a bit. But anyway, I, I digress. For me, a card that is going to annoy my opponents a little is like, I mean, first of all, there's a million cards out there like that that are going to annoy your opponents. There's some more on this list yet to come. So a- a- annoying your opponents is just not a good strategy. So for me, I'm just like, yeah, it's a good card, but definitely I would not call it for it to be banned because I think it'll, it, you know, in a case like Dranith Magistrate, it will almost cause you more harm than good in the long run, I think. All right, Thassa's Oracle. I guess we got to talk about that. Um, you could almost include demonic consultation here. I mean, the, the two go together. Uh, Thassa's Oracle goes with you know, any card that will exile your library. And I, the reason I included Thassa's Oracle on this list, and I don't think it should be banned, I think it should have never been made. I think that Lab Maniac, let's go to that. Okay, Lab Maniac was the first card like this. That was a huge mistake in my opinion. And I have considered making a video about the m- mistakes that I think um, Wizards of the Coast, things they should have never, r- roads they should have never gone down. Mind Slaver is another one. I think the unfunnest thing in all of Magic is controlling another player's turn. It doesn't get any worse than that in my opinion. Um, the idea of controlling your opponent's turn is a, I don't know why they did that. Uh, they should have never gone down that road. Thankfully, they haven't gone back to that well very much. I thought that was a, a massive mistake. There's nothing more unfun than, than that, in my opinion. They should have also never gone down the road of if you would draw a card and you have no cards, you win the game instead. And the reason why is because now you are taking something that would normally lose you the game and turning it into a win con. That's not a good thing, right? Because now a card like Demonic Consultation, which used to be a downside... Exiling cards from your library was supposed to be a downside. You've now turned the downside into a good into a good thing, right? Into a win con. So now in the history of the game, as soon as you create Lab Maniac, 
in the history of the game, you go back and you look at all these cards that had horrible downsides. Those horrible downsides now become upsides. So now a card that was already good to begin with becomes absolutely absurd because the, the downside is a good side because you are turning a what should have lost you the game into what now wins you the game, which to me is a huge, massive mistake. This is the same as if you would have zero life, you win the game instead. Can you imagine a card like that? That would be ridiculous, right? Because it's so easy to reduce your life to zero. That's what they're doing here. They're taking something that is, you should be losing the game. And instead of, you know, it would be fine if you had, you know, Platinum Angel or some effect where if you would lose the game, you don't lose the game. That's fine. But turning the, I lose the game into a win the game, you're completely doing a 180. That was a mistake. They should have never done that. They should have never printed Lab Maniac. And of course, Thassa's Oracle being the even better version of that. I think just the idea of that concept in itself is a mistake in my opinion. That being said, we've already gone down this road. So banning it now, I mean, for me, I'm like, who's playing this in a casual game? I don't know if people are. They sure as hell shouldn't be. It's the number one win con in CEDH. If Thassa's Oracle, which is the number one win con in CEDH, is being played in casual games, I don't even know, like, how do you even justify that? I don't know. How do you, I, like, I don't get it. It's a strictly CEDH card. I don't know how it is not. That's just my opinion on it. Just like with Urza and Gila, you just don't play it in a casual game. And in a, like, are the CEDH players complaining about this? If they are, they should be blaming themselves, okay? Again, I played CEDH for a while. They called for Flash to get uh, banned because everyone was doing the Flash Protean Hulk combo to win games. And that and, and it was so ubiquitous, it just made the format boring. I mean, you could argue that that format's kind of boring for that reason already. But by the way, notice I'm calling it a format. Hmm? even though it's technically not a different format. Thassa's Oracle just took over as the main win con. As soon as Protean Hulk, or as soon as Flash got banned, the Protean Hulk combo didn't win. So now everyone just went straight to Thassa's Oracle and Demonic Consultation, right? And that's going to happen again. If you ban Thassa's Oracle or Demonic Consultation in, in Commander and the CEDH players will just go to the next best, you know, two card I win the game thing, right? So I don't think that's going to solve anything anyway. Even in CEDH, that won't solve anything. All right, next up we got Ristic Study, and I you could also talk about Mystic Remora here, although I find that people don't have nearly as much of an issue with Mystic Remora. It's only non-creature spells. That's still a lot. It's still a great card. Um, it's also only one mana. You also have to pay the cumulative upkeep. It's particularly good in certain decks where, you know, like a Maldrotha deck where you can just keep replaying it from your graveyard. I almost never hear people complain about Mystic Remora, though, Ristic Study all the time. And, you know, what's the the argument for, for banning this, though? This is definitely a card that back in the day I would definitely not have an issue i would have loved to have it banned if you would have asked me i would have said yes ban it because i just think it's a ridiculous card it's obviously super super good and also super annoying however though my opinions obviously have changed i would not call for it to be banned and but if it was banned i definitely wouldn't complain right um i, I think probably all the cards on this list if they were banned i'd be like okay in fact you know this is for me why people get really upset about cards getting banned and i'm like I don't care. You know, I already have some of my favorite cards ever are already banned. Sundering Titan, for example. I love Sundering Titan. It's already banned, right? So, you know, th this is just going to happen. And, you know, there's so many cards to choose from that banning a single card is just like, unless it's an integral card to my deck, maybe that would piss me off, I guess. But yeah, there's not a single card in the format that I can think of off the top of my head that would be banned that would really upset me. I might think it was a silly decision. That I was like, why do they need to ban that? Ristic Study is a card that I definitely would be okay if they banned it, but I don't think it should be. I think it's a great card. Again, I think it's another one of those cards that is just going to make you the arch enemy. Your opponents are going to be, if any of your opponents that has removal ready to go, that's the first thing they're going to hit on the table. There's almost no, I mean, if we're talking about enchantments, there's, I don't think there's too many enchantments in the entire format that are going to get hit before a Ristic Study. It's highly unlikely, unless it's like a, a really heavy stacks piece. You know, if your opponent has a rest in peace and you have a graveyard deck, you might hit that first. Well, you probably would hit that first. Um, but there, there's very few, right? And that's why I don't play cards like that again. Because now I get to play my enchantments and my opponents are going to use the removal spell on the Ristic Study and not on my stuff, right? That's It's sort of a win-win for me, right? I'm getting rid of a removal spell in my opponent's hand and I'm getting rid of my opponent's Ristic Study off the table. It's all upside for me. So, yeah, I absolutely do not call for Ristic Study to get banned. I'm totally okay with it in format. It is a little annoying, and it is obviously a very powerful card. Banning, though, no chance.
Gaia's Cradle. Um, this is another one that, uh, again, I talked about my Band and Commander video, and a lot of people have brought this up as well. Tellurian Academy, of course, is banned in the format. It's banned in pretty much everything, I think. Pretty silly card. Again, it's like, why the heck did they make this? Were they thinking at all when they put this card out there? In other formats, Tellurian Academy is obviously way better. In Commander, they're pretty even. You know, I mean, it was it's pretty easy for someone in a mono green deck to spit out a whole bunch of tokens very, very quickly and have their guy's cradle be tapping for like six, seven mana. And then they can find lots of ways to untap it. Right. Um, I would say that in Commander, guy's cradle and Florian Academy are pretty much on par, pretty close. You know, that's for me. So if you're going to ban one, why not ban the other? Right. That, that I talked about this in my ban and Commander video or maybe in my unbanning video. There's lots of cards where it's like, OK, well, why are you banning this one and not this one? Right. Whatever your reasons are for banning. Tellurian Academy, I think, probably apply to Guy's Cradle as well. That being said, I'm not calling for it to get banned. I think that the removal wins games. You just put this is why you got to have Ghost Quarter, Strip Mine, or Wasteland in your deck for stuff like this. Yeah, your opponent, it's a busted card in the right deck, right? You, I, I wouldn't just throw Guy's Cradle. In fact, I think I probably don't have any decks I would put a Guy's Cradle in. If I had one, maybe in my Tishana deck, but I wouldn't do it because, again, it just makes you a target. It's 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 absolutely a card that's going to make you a target, and you're going to have to win the game really really quick, you know, if you're going to do so. And you know, I just don't have decks like that. I know people say, well, why wouldn't you? Okay, it makes you a target, but you can win the game with it. I don't have decks where a, a those kinds of cards will because I'm going to win really really fast. My decks are sort of slow burn decks where I win gradually through value and all that kind of stuff and appropriately used <laughs> removal. I, I really don't have, maybe my Tashana deck is the only deck where a Gaius Cradle would fit, but again, I just wouldn't put it in there because it just makes you a target. And, you know, I think we're at a point now where everyone is, you know, putting the Ghost Quarters in. There's usually one up at a table at any given moment. You just have to have it. You have to. Cabal Coffers is the same. Like, I, I think if you're calling for Gaius Cradle to get banned, wouldn't Cabal Coffers fit in the same sort of boat? Again, they're very similar in, in a land that is going to produce tons and tons of mana. So you just have to have removal. You have to. You have to have a something that can destroy lands in your deck. Again, we get to the casual versus competitive argument. Is Guy's Cradle a casual card? I haven't seen it in a casual game in a long time. It's super expensive, obviously. I mean, if I saw someone in their elf ball deck going off with a Guy's Cradle, I'd be like, hmm. That doesn't feel very casual to me. Again, I don't want to get too much into the casual versus competitive argument. If you're winning the game by like turn six, that doesn't that to me that's just not casual. Um that's my opinion. But I'm definitely not calling it to get banned. Uh, I would say that I'm okay with it um, in a commander game. And I've, as I've said before, if you're in a deck where you are playing Unicorn Tribal and you have a Gaia's Cradle to help boost the power level of your deck because Unicorn Tribal kind of sucks, great. I'm totally okay with that. I, I would be, you know, again, it depends on what you're doing in your deck. It always depends on what you're doing in your deck. And if someone's playing a really janky tribal theme and they have a guy's cradle in there, I'm fine with it. I think most people would be fine with it, except for the people that, again, they get the, they're like, they just go off and they completely lose any, any faculties and their ability to make proper threat assessment. They just are like, they're losing it because they just don't like that card so much. And that you, you need to really snap out of that, right? Again, with the Cyclonic Rift or any of these cards. You just really hate that card so much that it it keeps you from making proper threat assessment, right? I call it EDH PTSD. Again, what I, what I talked about in my worst plays video, which is you just focus in on that one card so much that you are not looking at the bigger picture and what your other opponents are doing, right? It's very easy for someone to play, you know, an attracts a deck where they're not really playing any particularly busted cards, but they're doing lots of great stuff and you should be focusing on them more and not worrying about the unicorn tribal deck that's playing a guy's cradle. Next up, we got Necropotence. And again, the, the top three on this list are cards. Yeah, my, my patrons did mention them on the Discord, but they're cards that I've heard to get called to be banned many, many times over. Necropotence, probably the best card draw card like the single card that for drawing cards it's got to be the best in the entire format i would think um in my opinion it's even better than An ancestral recall it, like if we're talking if ancestral recall was not banned in commander and by the way i don't think it should be i know i, I I'm, I'm crazy right um to me just drawing three cards in commander is just like it's good 
It's not going to break the game though, right? Necropotence can break the game, right? In my opinion, I don't think Ancestral Recall should get banned. I would rather see Necropotence get banned. I don't think Necropotence should be banned. I don't. However, it is definitely at the top of my list. Spoiler alert, I don't think any other cards on this list should be banned. I, did, I wasn't sure in the beginning if I would or not. After looking at it, I was like, yeah, I probably would ban any of them. I don't think Necropotence should get banned. I would rather see it banned than Ancestral Recall because I think it's more impactful. Um, drawing three cards is good. Drawing 30 cards is a lot better, right? And as we know in Commander, life is a resource. There's a lot of, of ways to get around the downsides of Necropotence. It's the best card draw card in the format. Even if you unband everything else, it's still the best card draw card in the format, right? It is incredibly powerful, no question. I will also say that... Uh, is it Yogmas Bargain? Is banned. And it's a very similar effect to this and costs six mana. You get the cards right away though. So maybe that's the thinking process there. It's a lot easier to combo off. I mean, with anything. And again, the combo off argument is just a terrible argument. This, you can combo off easily. You could, it combos with this. It combo, there's already a million arguments or, or situations that is, that's going to happen in the format. For me, that's, that's just a bad argument. Um, so why Yogmas Bargain is banned and Necropotence is not, because I think Necropotence is strictly better. Again, it, out of all the cards on this list, this was the one that I would definitely probably be for. If you said pick a, a, a card off this list to ban, this would be it. I definitely don't think the format would miss it. It is certainly a powerful card. I mean, just for the fact that Xur the Enchanter, you know, that there's a card that I talked about in my commanders that like you just can't play. You just can't play Xur the Enchanter in a casual game. And Necropotence is the reason why. Everyone just assumes the first card you're going to go get is Necropotence. And a lot of time that is the case. I mean, you could essentially just build these, a deck that has nothing to do with Xur at all and just use it to go get your Necropotence. And then use and, and build your deck around Necropotence, right? Um, and and I think if you ban Necropotence, Xur would be a lot more casual of a commander that people would be a lot more accepting of because you can't go get Necropotence with it, right? Because I think that's the big fear for everyone with Xur is they're just going to go get their Necropotence and draw a bunch of cards. Yeah, that's definitely the case. I mean, being able to draw, you know, 39 cards or whatever instantaneously is, is pretty ridiculous. So I wouldn't ban it, but... Of this list, this would be probably the one that I would pick too, Ben, if I had to pick one. But at the top of this list, number one is Dockside Extortionist. And I put this at number one because I think, especially recently, it is the card, if you pulled all Commander players, that you know people would say they would definitely want it banned. And as I've already spoiled, I would not. If I was on the Rules Committee and we were voting, I would not vote for any of these cards. However, again... If it got banned, I wouldn't be super upset. I currently have it in one deck. It's my Gerard deck. It's great in there. I will say, though, you're making this card better, okay? All you people complaining about this card, you're making it better. It is entirely reliant on your opponents, okay? So all those mana rocks you're putting in your deck, you're making your opponent's Dockside Extortionist better. I mean, that's my thinking. I've had, I used to have this in more decks, and I found a lot of times, especially early in the game, like turn two, you're sitting there with a Dockside Extortionist, and you're like, okay, well, I have one opponent with a Soul Ring. That's it right? You're just going to hold it in your hand. I mean, you have to wait. It's entirely relying on your opponents and it's just not good early in a game. Again, if you're in that play group where everyone's playing Mox Diamonds and, and Mana Crypts, yeah, it's going to be a lot better, but your opponents are playing Mox Diamonds and Mana Crypts. So you're just evening the playing field at that point, right? In CEDH, yeah, it's incredibly busted because everyone's doing that, but so is everything else in CEDH. You can just win the game on like turn one in CEDH. So nobody in CEDH should be complaining about Dockside Extortionist, that's for sure. So now if we just talk about casual, how many people are going to have a, a board full of artifacts and enchantments on like turn three or four? I don't think they are in a casual game, right? So how many are you going to get off of this, right? How many treasure tokens are you actually going to get? Usually when I cast a Dockside Extortionist, if it's early in the game, I get like four, which is okay. That's a decent ritual effect. Later in the game, I might get like seven or eight, but that's later in the game. Now we're on like turn eight or nine. And if someone's getting that many treasure tokens on turn eight or nine, what's the big deal? Should be complaining about that either, right? Of course, everyone screaming at the uh, screen right now is going to be saying the combo potential again. So like there are at least half a dozen commanders off the top of my head in the format that go infinite with one card. A commander. So you have a card in the command zone that goes infinite with one card, right? 
You have Exquisite Blood and Sanguine Bond. You have Kiki Jiki comboing with 50 different cards. You have you that's already a thing. If you want Doxard Extortionist banned because of the combo potential, then you should also want Kiki Jiki banned, right? Because that combos with like 30 different cards. Kiki Jiki combos with more cards than Do- Doxard Extortionist does, I guarantee it, right? So if we're talking about the combo potential, again, you come back to the question of is this should this even be allowed in a casual game? Should you be doing that? In a, should I be Cloudstone, Curio, Dockside Extortioning in a in a casual game or whatever the combo is there? Return it to my hand and recast it and recast it, getting infinite mana. Again, it's it's not even a game-winning combo. If I'm bouncing my Dockside Extortionist and getting infinite treasure tokens with it, that's not even a game-winning combo. Now I need something else. I'm either creating infinite mana, for which then I need another card. So now we're up to like a three-card combo in order to do something. Or I need like a Mayhem Devil where I can sack all those treasure tokens and kill all my opponents. So we're in a, we're in a three-card combo range here, right? There aren't any, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm quite certain there are not any two-card combos with Dockside Extortionist that win the game. Are there? I don't think there is, right? So now we're in three-card combo range when there are already plenty of two card combos in the game and a lot of them are very much casual commander acceptable lots of those i I think a lot of people are 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 okay with sanguine bond and exquisite blood in a casual game so there's already lots of those combos available and again people will say oh well dark side extortionist only costs two so you can do it early in a game but then we're back to how many artifacts and enchantments do your opponents have early in the game they don't have any or they shouldn't unless you're in a really competitive circle right so, I, I mean, every direction I go here, I keep running into roadblocks. And I've played this card tons in games. I've seen it tons in games. I've never had an issue with it. I honest, Like, it's a great card. No question. I can't believe people are calling to get banned. When this card first came out, all the red players out there were just like, yay, we actually have a good card that helps us ramp. Because red doesn't do that very well. Maybe they should have put a couple of red pips on there. I don't know. That's what I thought. I still think that. I absolutely do not want this card to be banned because I think it is necessary in a lot of decks. I, it's great in my Gerard deck. I sacrifice it and get it back, right? For me personally, again, it's a card that makes you a target, so I only have it in my Gerard deck because it fits. Just like I would, I don't play Smothering Tithe, but I would put that in a in a deck where it actually fits, like Benny Brax, right? Like I said when I talked about that commander, there's a, a commander that absolutely fits with Smothering Tithe. It's a match made in heaven, so I guess you probably would have to play it in that deck. But I'm not just going to shoehorn Smothering Tithe into all my decks, and I'm not going to shoehorn a Dockside Extortionist into all my decks. Like I said, there's been a lot of situations where I'm sitting there with a Dockside Extortion in my hand, and I can't use it. I, I play it, and I get like two treasure tokens. whoop de doo right? It's just not that good. It is a card that in a lot of situations is going to be just sitting in your hand. And there's a lot of situations where it can be absolutely possible. Busted. And I suppose with all the ridiculous increase in treasure tokens, I mean, they're they're only making Dockside Extortion is better, which is sort of the ironic thing here is like, let's make a whole bunch of more treasure token stuff. But in, in doing so, we're making Dockside Extortion is even better. Oh, boy. You know, I mean, you, you, we've sort of been locked into this circle of pain or whatever. I absolutely don't want it to be banned. No, no not at all. I, I, I actually think I would love to actually have a... a a head-to-head discussion with someone who thinks it should be banned. Like, what's the specific scenario? Again, going back to Cyclonic Rift, where I'm like, what's the specific scenario that you're concerned about here? What's the specific scenario with Dockside Extortionist? What What is actually happening? If we're talking about comboing off, now we're in, okay, are we even playing casual commander territory? And if it's like a three-card combo, like that's your complaint, is a three-card combo? Like I make infinite mana with my Doxit Extortionist, then I need another card to win the game with? Lots of options in the format for doing stuff like that. Lots. There is tons and tons of two-card combos that make infinite mana. There's lots of two-card combos that just win the game. So that's just a bad argument. For any card getting banned, that's a bad argument. It combos with X. That's not a good argument. You know how many cards you'd have to ban in the format if that be the case? You know, it's it's funny to me that no one ever calls for Kiki Jiki to get banned because that card just goes infinite with so many cards. Anyway, that's my list. Those are the cards that I, I guess, would not ban, right? Um, I wasn't sure. I, I asked my patrons, hey, give me some cards that a lot of people are calling to get banned. And I thought, I'll make a video and I'll just make my case of whether or not it should or shouldn't be banned. And I guess I just don't want to see any of these cards get banned. That's how I have gravitated towards. Uh, definitely, there's some cards on this list that I wanted to get banned back in the day, and I've changed my mind completely. There are just situations where maybe I want to put a Thassa's Oracle in my deck because I'm not doing anything you know, nefarious with it. Uh, flash is another one. I, I wish that card wasn't banned in the format because maybe I want to flash in 
you know, a, a protean hulk and I'm not going to get combo pieces with it. I'm just going to get a couple of creatures and put them into play. Or I'm going to flash in my Koku show so I can get the dice trigger. It's just a, it's a really neat way to get a dice trigger off of a creature. So I wish Flash wasn't banned. I, I, I'm actually kind of annoys me that CEDH players got that card banned, even though most commander players are casual players. So it's like, okay, now CEDH players are getting cards banned in, in casual commander. That that kind of doesn't make sense to me. I don't, I, did, I don't love that. Again, now we get into the discussion of separating the formats, which I've always been for, and that would make banning cards a lot more easy, I, I, in my opinion. But what do you guys think? I know there's going to be lots of comments on this video about how I'm wrong and how all these cards should be banned. I think a lot of times people really take your, their subjective uh, feelings into, into this rather than being objective about an actual card. They just think about, oh, my buddy goes off all the time with Doxet Extortionist, so I want it to be banned. Or my buddy in my playgroup always Cyclonic Rifts and then wins the game, so now I want it. To... That's not a good argument to ban a card. Try to be objective, guys, okay? Try to think about the entire format, not just... I'm thinking about my own play group. And if you are thinking about your own play group, you can ban your own cards, right? People do this all the time. That's what's great about this format. You can decide to ban Doxet Extortionist in your play group, which I'm sure a lot of people have, or Cyclonic Rift, or the color blue, which I've heard. I mean, people can do whatever they like, or unban cards, right? You still want to use Golos as your commander? I'm sure there's lots of play groups out there that still allow their players in their group to do so. So make these decisions for yourself if you're able to do so. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. That is it for today, and thanks for tuning in.